Previously on Tanner Does Mods. I think one of these three capacitors did a gun pay and died on me. Whatever, I'm done. We still don't know what the problem is. You know, I'm gonna assume you guys aren't members here. Uh, you know what, why don't you just go ahead and sign us up? Actually, if you'd like to join our swim club, you need to be sponsored by two existing members, but I'm sorry to tell you fellows that membership is currently at capacity. At capacity. Yeah. Ugh. We're in the middle of a terrible heat wave and you happen to be at capacity. For us. I cannot believe that, that just happened in this day and age. I know, I can't believe there's such a big list. Mm -mm. Don't you get it, dude? They'll always be at capacity for us. I don't get that at all. Is that what he said? Don't you get it? We got big time, dude. He called us lower class. He called us lower class? Yeah. Last time, we built a Wonderswan with an IPS display, but we had to scavenge a new motherboard because the original motherboard's capacitors were at capacity. Well, who's at capacity now, big shot? That's right, I got the most bulk capacitors China had to offer and got them rush shipped to me. I recommend if you're gonna do this, you get the Console 5 Wonderswan capacitor kit instead, but they were out of stock and I was out of patience. Now, I don't exactly remember which capacitors we need out of these, but luckily, I got a boo-boo, so I wrote down the capacitor list on this Band-Aid wrapper. To start, I'm going to make sure that the dead motherboard is actually dead. Chisel tip. It's not actually dead, but I spent way too long on that intro to stop the episode now, so let's pretend that it is. To get started, take the whole thing apart. Remove the motherboard from its shell. Check your boo-boo notes for the capacitor list. Check that the capacitors are roughly the same size as the ones they're replacing. A little deviation's fine, but you don't want to go overboard. Okay, so normally I use this flux, but um, it is not no clean, it is do clean flux, and I happen to have this new no clean flux. I'm very happy about that. Get yourself some no clean flux if you don't have some. I assume you don't have to clean it. That's the whole point of buying it. I better not have to clean this stuff. There are two ways to remove capacitors. The stupid way is to gently rock the cap back and forth while applying heat with your soldering iron. This can cause the pad to lift and destroy the whole board. If you do insist on being a dumbass, make sure to apply lots of flux and introduce fresh solder often, you moron. Against all odds, you've managed to not bung it up with your low IQ efforts. Congratulations, dum-dum. Now clean up the mess you've left behind. The easy way to remove a capacitor is to cut into its soft metallic flesh and let your flush cutters feast on the juices inside. As the capacitors are filled with the same fluid that you'd find inside a can of tuna, this may result in your fingers smelling like a good time. Oh yeah, that's good. Cut into the plastic base and desolder the remaining legs. Yeah, something like that, I think is how we're supposed to do it. Clean up the pads while singing low-quality song parodies to yourself about Flux. Let's get fluxed up. Do, do, do. Give me that alcohol. Let's get fluxed up. Repeat this step for all the remaining capacitor. I can't wait for you to flux me up. Prepare how your capacitors are going to be placed. On a capacitor, black is the negative. If we look at the board there, you will notice Positive, positive, positive. All labeled. Easy peasy. This, of course, is the last part that is easy peasy. From here on out, it's all lemon squeezy. You should be trying to solder one lead of the capacitor in place to keep it tacked down before eventually moving on to the next lead. However, I found that the best method is sheer dumb luck. Should I be doing this with my bare hands? I don't know. Probably not.
Do note that due to the small clearance between the capacitor and the cartridge slot, you may have to change your tip size to something much smaller. But hopefully by now you know how to work a small tip with your tuna fingers. As you can see, I did not do a super clean job down there. This is uh, frustrating to do, honestly. Once all the capacitors are soldered on, put the whole thing back together and pray to your god of choice. If your prayers are answered, the device will turn on properly. If they're not, try praying harder. Sacrifice a farm animal if need be. <laughs> Our prayers were answered. Hail Satan! Tanner does mods, Tanner does mods, this is the ending theme of Tanner does mods. Please leave a comment and subscribe and share with your friends and come back again next time.